I'm going to start. I'm going to ask my, my colleague, uh, Ms. Mampet Chaba, who's our Chief Director for Multilateral Cooperation in Africa. She also chairs the Local Organizing Committee for the hosting of the World Science Forum to present to us the, the background to the forum, an outline of the program, also highlighting the opportunities you can be involved. And subsequent to that, we are looking forward to have a discussion on the principles which should be included in the Cape Town Declaration on Science for Social Justice, because that will be one of the outcomes of, of the event. But a little bit, bit more on that a bit later. So first, I'm going to start by inviting Mampe to speak to us and excite us about the World Science Forum. Mampe, please. Thank you very much, Stan. And thank you to all of you who are here today. I'm sure it was difficult to get to this venue, but we are glad that you're here. Before I start, can I just see by a show of hands, how many of you are aware that South Africa is hosting the first ever World Science Forum to be hosted in Africa by just a show of hands? Wow. And how many have registered and have your badges? <laughs> wow. <laughs> So it's a quite a good number, but this will excite you even more. So if you've not registered, uh, this will excite you even more. All right, so the World Science Forum is taking place in Cape Town from the 6th to the 9th of December. And the theme for the Science Forum is Science for Social Justice. So this applies to the whole science enterprise, all the way from knowledge generation to application and exploitation of the IP that's generated from, from research. So we'll be talking about anything and everything regarding the injustices, regarding science, regarding uh, how science addresses social injustice issues, inequality, environmental destruction, marginalization, exclusion. We'll also be talking about the role of science in advising uh, social justice and how the values of social justice such as transparency, inclusivity, and transformation of the entire social enterprise. But most importantly, we also want to be responsive to the needs of society. We have five sub-themes, as you can see on the screen, science for human dignity, science for climate justice, science for Africa and the world, science for diplomacy, and science in Africa. We have a number of, uh, okay, I'll come to that now. So our patron for the forum is our own president, uh, Mr. Suru Ramaphosa, and in attendance will be the Hungarian president, Her Excellency Katalin Ivanovak. The host or co-host is the South African Science and Innovation Department through Dr. Mzimande and uh, Dr. Thomas Fruit, who is the president of the Hungarian Academy of Science. It will be in Cape Town, ICC. And the date, like I said, is from the 6th to the 9th, but we have a number of pre-forum events that I'll get to in a minute. But we're starting with the earliest three event as early as the 28th of November, which is the SADC um, Science Policy Makers Session. But the pre-events run from the 28th all the way to Sunday, the 4th of December. We have about 28 site events that will be from the 5th to the 6th of December. 22 of those are already posted on the website. We also have 28 thematic sessions. 24 of those are on the website. And the main program starts with an opening on the 6th of December. We have about 100 exhibitors that have been confirmed already that will display their work from the 6th to the 9th of December. And we're expecting about 1,000 delegates on site, an unlimited number really virtually, with about 200 speakers on site. Uh, there will be about 30 to 35 VIPs. This includes ministers and heads of multilateral organizations, Invitations have been sent out to over 14,000 people, and you can also request an invitation by going directly on the website. If you're not sure how to do that, you can talk to myself or the colleagues from DSI who are seated over there at the end of, of this session. 
So we have about 730 registered delegates to date. The number is fast increasing. We have had a glitch over the last few days. So if you try to register over the last few days and you struggle, try again today, you should be able to, to register. And in some of the pre-events that are open to uh, all WSF delegates is the citizen run for clean air, which is on Saturday. I'll talk to that in a minute. The ICGP Science and the City, Science Excursions, and the Women in Science Film Festival. But I'll speak to that also in a minute. We will leave this presentation with the organizers so that they can share, should you want a copy. So just a high level overview of the program. So the sixth is the official opening uh, with an SKA breakfast. I think it's, it's a closed event, but the official opening in the evening is open to all delegates with a keynote lecture and an opening reception. And then on Wednesday, we, there will be a series of key lectures on science and human dignity and some on science for climate justice, followed by plenary sessions and thematic sessions ending with a Frontiers Policy Lab-sponsored uh, delegates party, open to all delegates as well. On the 8th, 9 to 10, so it's entire day as well, keynote lectures on science and Africa in the world, and on science for diplomacy. And we also have a DSI-hosted gala dinner, open to all delegates. On Friday, the lectures and the plenary sessions will be on justice in science, with the closing ceremony that will be from 11.30 till four o'clock in the afternoon. So that's a high level uh, overview of the program. We have a number of partners that have come forward and uh, supporting travel and accommodation for various categories of delegates. So uh, Department FRQ from Quebec, World Federation of Science Journalists, are offering travel guns to 20 journalists from across the globe. DSI is offering accommodation for those and they have a specific program for science journalists that I'll get into in a minute. The National Youth Program is sponsoring accommodation and travel for 27 SA STEM and journalism unemployed graduates who really want the voice of the youth to come through in the, in the program as well. Frontiers Lab, like I said, are sponsoring a cocktail function on the 8th, and there will be a special VIP meeting or meet where selected people from the audience will get to interact with ministers, heads of multilateral organizations on a one-to-one -one basis. The International Science Council is offering travel and accommodation for 30 ISC associates from the continent, most of which are young people. And they also have a special closed event on the Monday, the 5th of December. Elsevier Foundation is offering travel and accommodation for African young female scholars and hosting a media cocktail at the end of the Science Journalist Program on Friday, the 2nd of December. UNESCO is paying for science journalists from the region, from the SADC member states, and for policymakers, so a total of 50 people that UNESCO is paying for. IDRC of Ghana and INSA Africa is paying for about 19 delegates to come through uh, to the conference as well. SciDev.net sponsoring the Monday evening, uh, networking evening. It's a closed, closed event. Global Young Academy is doing a Cape Town tour for early, research, early career researchers. UNESCO is running the Youth Boot Camp for about 250 learners off-site but they will join the forum on the last day. The Nelson Mandela Children's Fund is paying for transport for these 250 learners, and the Western Cape Education Department and the Department of Basic Education are sponsoring part of the Youth Boot Camp. And the University of the Western Cape is sponsoring a venue for the Youth Boot Camp. So we've got 13 partners so far, which uh, they will all be acknowledged as part of the, their contribution. So we have 22 World Science Forum pre-events, so those from the 28th to the 6th of December. Uh, the ones highlighted in yellow are open to all delegates. In blue are the post-events, so the 9th of December. It's the multilateral dialogue and the AIMS uh, farewell function for Dr. Barry Green. So... Um, 
the science journalist program will include all of those sponsored journalists that will come through but in as part of that we'll also have about 12 10 self-sponsored SA media houses that are welcome to join the science journalist program. It will start on the 30th of November at Stellenbosch University. We have a full program for the two and a half days. It will also include a media networking cocktail that e Friday evening. And they will also be invited to the science citizens run uh, for clean air. So these are two points from which the runs will take place, one at Sea Point, one at Kayelicha. It's about a five to 10K run, not, not a serious run. So everyone is invited, but the aim of this runs is to collect data on air quality in the city of Cape Town. The data will be presented to the mayor of Cape Town at the end of the forum with actions that the Cape Town city has to um, commit to. We have science excursions on Saturday. Uh, we have eight science institutions in and around Cape Town that have opened their doors for delegates uh, at a zero fee, no cost. So if you're interested, you can also visit the website and register for the pre-events. And then on Monday, uh, we will have, for the science journalists in particular, a brown bag lunch sponsored by ISC, a talk by Alison Mensen, who's the president of the World Federation of Science Journalists, and a filmmaking workshop. So journalists will be taught on how to record on film and tell stories about science. And then there are about, there'll be a media cocktail sponsored by SciDev and a Women in Science Film Festival that is open to all delegates uh, that evening. And then uh, on the Monday, the science journalists will be invited to special events that are taking place across the whole Monday. And it, then they join the, the, the main program on uh, Tuesday during the opening. Uh, the youth program follows roughly the same uh, list of activities. And yeah, so there is some information on the sessions that are open to all delegates on the website. I've already spoken a little bit about Citizens Run for Clean Air. We have a poster on the website on more information and for those that are interested to register. UNESCO and SADC are sponsoring the Youth Boot Camp. I already indicated that there'll be 250 learners and 50 learners, so 50 teachers that will be part of the Youth Boot Camp. So they will be exposed to coding, artificial intelligence and robotics. UNESCO is sponsoring robotics kits for the learners. So the best kits will be displayed at the forum so that we give exposure to the learners. Academies in the region, science academies in the region have a program that runs from the 5th to the 6th of December. And uh, ASAF, our Academy of Science with SADC Secretariat are hosting that. Okay, and then... Um, we also have a soft launch that is planned for the 10th of November, especially for the media. If there are media houses that are interested in that, you are welcome to join us, but we will have a vibrant discussion through a panel constituted by our DG, Dr. Film Joaha, Professor Muniba Isaacs from the University of Western Cape, Dr. Giothi Kara, who's an NRF postdoc fellow, a young lady who's uh, placed at Iziko Museum, and Professor Tolula Oni, who will join virtually with Professor Thomas Fried as well. Uh, so you are all welcome. If you need more information on the soft launch, it will be a hybrid event, so we can send you those details. So with that, I hope if you've not registered for the Science Forum, you will now be enticed to. And if you need any info, we are welcome to answer your questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mampi, for that exciting overview. Are there any questions, any, any comments, either for those of you present here or those online? Yes, please.
Yes, the, the, the program is online. The thematic sessions, site events, pre-events that I spoke to are all online. So they, if you just Google WSF 2022, you should be able to get to the, to the, to the website. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, you're speaking to Lena here from the Innovation Hub. Um, I need to check, is there any opportunity for uh, participation on the program um, as from uh, coming from the Innovation Hub, or is the program already firm? I'm, I'm, I think I'm speaking for you know, our side of the Innovation Hub. Is there an area in where we can take speaking, part? Not yes. in, in, time, in, in terms of speaking, yes being part of, of the program as, as a thought leader in the innovation space. Thank you so much. So um, the, the program, first of all, I think the point to, 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 to emphasize here, South Africa is hosting the World Science Forum, but we're doing this on behalf of a... <laughs> but let me, let me continue with that, and then we'll, we'll raise it with the colleagues bilaterally. So there's an international consortium Mampe indicated UNESCO, Interacademy Partnership, International Science Council. Uh, they own the World Science Forum, if you like. It takes place every two every two years, every four years in Hungary, and then every two years out, outside. So the program is co-decided by all of these partners. So so we, as the Department of Science and Innovation, do not have the sole decision on the the program. So there's a governance structure called the steering committee and an organizing committee, which brings together all the partner organizations. And it was they who decided on the program. So for the main part of the program, there was a competitive call for proposals um, published last year where organizations who wanted to organize sessions could submit proposals. These were then evaluated by independent uh, experts, the members of the committee. They were ranked and those proposals uh, which were deemed most compelling was selected for the program. Now, one of the reasons there was a, a bit of a delay was it was a very difficult process because we had so many good proposals. So there were Mampe and the team and the colleagues spent a lot of time merging sessions, trying to find space to cover all the areas. So the, the short answer to your question is the program is finalized. The other answer to the question is if you see the program online, when you see, for example, there's a session, I'm thinking an example, organized by the African Academy of Sciences. This is a real life example on the challenges for food security in Africa caused by urbanization. And at the Innovation Hub, you have a thought leader. You have someone who is a top expert in that. Then contact us. And then the team, we will then facilitate contact with the academy and, and, and arrange uh, for, for that person to be included. So that, so yes, the formal program is finalized, but if you have specific proposals and ideas, you're very welcome to engage with, with Mampe, with Palesa and the team. And because the, the objective everyone shares is to have the best event possible and the best discussion possible. So we wouldn't want to exclude anyone. The other part, which is also too important to emphasize, this is not a, for, a forum where we want death by PowerPoint. No, where um, there are four or five speakers and by an hour into it, we're all on our phones, etc., and switch off because it just goes on and on and on. There are going to be active discussion. So even if you or your colleagues are not a speaker in the program, you're going to have the opportunity to speak and to engage. So at least half the time of every session is going to be on discussion. So we would definitely welcome, welcome, welcome you to be there. But if you have specific suggestions, you can be in touch with us. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? All right. I don't see any questions. Then I can. Thank you very much, Mampe, for that's your pleasure. for that introduction. So we're coming to the second part now. Um, uh, so, just again to build on what Mampe said, why are we organizing this event? What do we we want from it at the end? One of the aspects, of course, and I think we are many South Africans here in this room, but also very esteemed and privileged partners, such as our friends from the Chinese embassy, we want to profile South Africa as a reliable, as a strategic partner for international cooperation in science. So, so that, that's a key mission for us, which we should state up front. 
But secondly, we want this event also to make a difference. To make a difference in focusing the attention of the world on the role science should play in society. And specifically, how science should respond to uh, an objective, which I'm sure everyone in this room agree with, is that our world needs more social justice. Now, if you don't think that's important, please say so during the discussion time, because that's some, something we should discuss. So we want this event to have real impact. Now, how will it will 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 we achieve impact? Now, of course, you could say, and you, you could say could be said of the, the the CSR conference. What do events like these achieve? Well, in the first instance, they build relations, they raise awareness. And that will be a very important outcome of also the World Science Forum. We are confident that we're going to provide a platform for new partnerships to be made, new ideas for cooperation to, to be born, and people to be brought together uh, um, as a result of the forum. So that, that's part of, of our mission. But the other mission is also, as I've said, to raise increased awareness, consciousness of the role science should play to respond to, to social justice. And that's why our government and our minister had also achieved, had also decided on science for social justice as the theme for the event. And as an output on the very last day of the forum, in the closing session, there is going to be adopted a declaration, a declaration on science for social justice. Now, this is not going to be an intergovernmental declaration where governments are going to spend weeks negotiating every little world word. As you may know, currently starting in Egypt is the COP climate change negotiations, and there's intense discussions about sentences, what, what commitments are made, etc. This is not what we're talking about here. This is a commitment which everyone uh, at the forum will make, uh, not in any legal binding way, but, but perhaps most importantly, and we hopefully in a sincere way in which we all can hold each other accountable to what, to, to, to what we want to do. And this declaration is going to be born bottom up. Today is the very first discussion on its content. There's a stakeholder collective, uh, which is going to have a whole series of events to get input from uh, different interest groups, broader civil society, because one of the key themes indeed is that science should be for all, but 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 also 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 by all. And then during the actual forum, there's going to be online consultation, etc., for us to converge on the um, the text. So let me. How does this work? That's woken everyone up, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see. Yeah. Um, so again, just to, to say the science for social justice. What do we mean by social justice? And again, we would would, would welcome your input uh, as well on how we define. But at its heart, it's ensuring it's ensuring fairness, it's ensuring equality, it's it's ensuring that resources, opportunities and privileges are accessible to all and that no one, no, one, no one is excluded. And I'm sure we can all think in our day-to-day -day lives, in our own country, in, in, in this world, the many injustices which, will, which, are, which are prevailing. And that's what we need science and innovation to respond to. So just again, a bit of background about why our government has chosen science for social justice as a theme, starting at home with ACID in the Department of Science and Innovation, you will hopefully be aware that our government has a new tenure, the Cadel Plan for Science, Technology and Innovation. And if, if you want to sum up what that plan is about, it's really about how does science improve the quality of living of, of, of all South Africans, achieving greater social justice. So that, that's very sort of close to, to home reason. But also, social justice is at the heart of our constitution. That's what the founding mothers and founding fathers of South Africa's democracy worked for. And those values, the values of social justice, are enshrined in our constitution. And it's also, furthermore, achieving social justice will translate into real practice in a concrete manner the values and uh, principles of our humanity as translated in the philosophy of Ubuntu, that we are because of who we, we, who we all are. So I hopefully you will agree that science for social justice is a very relevant theme for uh, the World Science Forum. So what this declaration will be, it's not going to be uh, a, 
extremely lengthy document. It wants to be focus, uh, concrete, but it will be structured in, depending, of course, if the stakeholders take the discussion another way. But for the moment, the, the outline is structured in three ways. It's first of all acknowledging the need that we all need to work together, that our world needs to respond to the increasing greater social justice in a society. And we need to acknowledge, if you want to solve a problem, you have to acknowledge the problem exists. You have to be very honest about that problem. So that's what the declaration will start with. And then secondly, and hopefully everyone in, in this room who comes from the broader science community will agree, is that, that we recognize that science, and by science, let's use a broader definition, also including technology, innovation, knowledge generation, has an absolutely crucial, if not central role to play in achieving greater social justice. And then most importantly, the declaration will conclude with specific commitments. So again, not legally binding, not uh, um, commitments, but moral commitments, which should be stronger than legally binding commitments, that we are going to undertake specific actions. We're all going to commit together to work together to put science at the service of society for greater social justice. So first section, the need. Why do we need this? Why does science need to respond to social justice? I'm sure you can all agree we are here in this beautiful facility, CSR International Convention Center, uh, one of Africa's leading research organizations in a very well established part of our capital city of Chwane, but this is not a reality of many, many South Africans and also citizens across our continent. Our country continues to be one which is marked by what we often refer to as the triple challenge of poverty, unemployment and inequality. And that cannot be acceptable. That cannot be acceptable. We can be busy here with the excitement of science, but science must respond to that social injustice which continues to prevail. And it's and it's very it's as visible in Cape Town, perhaps, as any other city. If you drive from the airport, you arrive there, you drive into the convention center where the forum will be, and then the reality of what many of our citizens endure are in your face. And that's what we want to address and want, want to speak to. But going, going beyond the immediate challenge, if we look at what would be the key societal challenges which the world is confronted with as a whole, that could be climate change, that could be pandemic disease, it could be food security. At the heart of it all, at the heart of it all is injustice and social injustice. With regard to climate change, it is those who are suffering most are not those who caused the pollution in the first instance and, 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 and responsible for. And how the world is required to or are being asked to, to respond, to, and this is a political statement I'm making, which is dangerous for a public servant, um, is, is often marked by injustice. You cannot ask all countries in the world, that's fortunately as a position for my government, so I'm quite, quite safe, to respond in, in the same way. That's not fair. That would be unjust. You, you, have, one has to, uh, you have to have a, a perspective which take into account economic and social development objectives. We saw social injustice in practice, in real life, during the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic with regard to the inequitable access to vaccines. Northern developed countries, uh, you could, we can debate that, looked after themselves, and then Africa and others came, came, came second in line. Of course, we had privileged partners and strategic partners like China and others who showed that solidarity with us and, 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 and work with us. And the same applies to, to food security. So at the heart of the global challenges are also questions of, 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 of injustice. But then also injustice causes insecurity. I mean, if our world today is a fragile world with war, right, war, conflict happening, not only in Europe, we should never, it's not only Russia and Ukraine, there are also other conflict zones, zones in the world. At the heart of this is the injustice which causes that instability. We, we also know that in our society, injustice creates insecurity for many of our fellow citizens. We can think of the scourges of gender-based violence, of xenophobia, of discrimination, exclusion, of, of, of groups, and then also for, for individuals. Uh, how many fellow citizens will not be confronted with the very real, and something we don't speak often about, we should speak more about, mental, mental health challenges caused by injustice. So hopefully you will agree, and if you don't agree, that's why we're here for, is to discuss 
because in, uh, the addressing injustice must be for open discussion and open, open, open debate, that there is a need. There is a need to respond and advance the cause for greater um, so, uh, social justice. But then, what do we do as this community here, as the bigger science, science, science community? In the first instance, one thing COVID-19 did show us is that for policy and decision making, whether that's at the governmental level, whether that is uh, in, in the private sector and broader civil society, the best decisions are made if those are decisions which are evidence-based, which is informed by scientific knowledge, by data and information products. So if we're going to respond to all these challenges of science, uh, which science for social justice, justice must do, we need to enhance scientific advice for policy and, and decision making. Secondly, and this conference in Nomiso is all about that. There's huge and increased potential for technology innovation to make a concrete difference in the lives of people, whether that's in water and, and sanitation, access to digital the technologies, enhance food, food, food production. So technology, innovation, responding to poverty alleviation, it should be self-evident. We shouldn't even be, be questioning that. Very important to also take into consideration, and that's a note to ourselves in the Department of Science and Innovation. Um, tech innovation is not only technology innovation, it's also social innovation. And, and social innovation, business innovation can make also a huge difference in the quality of living of our of citizens. But then more than open, more than important perhaps even, and this is the third point, what's, what science can do. If we want to correspond and we want to advance social justice, we need to be committed to progress. And isn't that what science is about? Throughout the ages, throughout centuries, science has been about progressing. It's about advancing. Science is also about dreaming. Science is about imagining that what is not now, but that that what can be. And it's about also dreaming that world, that world which is not marked by, by social justice. Science, I, honest, I also believe, is about tolerance. It's about respect, including for different opinions, because that's how science again pro progresses. It's because Toto and I disagree. And we compare that, that we advance. Science is also bringing together. Science doesn't divide. Science, science doesn't exclude, because science progresses if we are together. And I also deeply believe is that science is about caring. Science, science is about sensitive. Science doesn't exist in a, in a vacuum. Science is here in the world we live in. So these are all the interventions, the engagements we believe science can, can make a difference in advancing social justice. So what it is, what is it we think should be contained in this declaration? So these are some outlying principles when we look at those key commitments. In the first instance, and I'm speaking to myself and those with policymaking responsibility, with, with funding responsibility, is that our future research and innovation and policy and funding agendas will be shaped, will be decisively influenced by the objectives of social justice. Of course, if we want to all of do this, we need to continue investing in talent. We need to invest in the young generation. We need to make sure that we create an environment where those that want to make a difference, their potential can be unlocked and, uh, and, 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 and can, can prosper, ensuring that opportunities are being, being um, made available to all. Uh, a word which is very prominent in the South African policy discourse, but certainly always increasingly relevant, is transforming, changing the whole scientific enterprise, <coughs> that it is more diverse, that it's more responsive, that it's more as increased cohesion, greater in inclusivity, to put it simply, more relevant to the needs of our society. Also, if we're going to, as a world, put science at the service of um, social justice, we need increased international cooperation. We need to work together better, informed by values such as co-ownership, co-responsibility, not a traditional north-south paradigm where the south is dictated to or where Africa is seen merely as a service provider for international cooperation. This requires also uh, commitment, shared responsibility to invest in capacity building uh, in developing countries, specifically in our own continent in Africa. We often 
speak in science policy debates uh, about the jargon of open science, uh, but we would want this declaration also to be a real commitment to open science, beyond the jargon. What is, of course, what is open science? It's sharing, it's accessibility, access to research results, access to research data, but perhaps most importantly, we often forget open science is also a science which is open to society, which includes society in shaping the science, whether it's through citizen science, whether it's through partnerships with, with civil society. So putting open science in, in practice should be a key focus of the, the declaration. And then really ensuring that the scientific enterprise becomes a value, informed by values, driven by, by values, such as human rights, respecting ethical principles, making sure there's integrity in the research enterprise. Because if we do not have justice in science, how can we harness science for, 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 for justice? And then most important, as I've said, this is not a legally binding uh, declaration, but it is a declaration where we would want everyone who will gather in Cape Town uh, commit to hold each other accountable for. So let me just con conclude um, by recalling some wise words by one of the founding fathers of our democracy, uh, former President Nelson Mandela, when he spoke about social justice. And I, I really believe that for, for us in the scientific community, the cause for social justice is not only an imperative, it's something we have to do, because as President Mandela said, overcoming poverty, it's not a gesture of charity. It is an act of justice. It is the protection of a fundamental human right, the right to dignity and a decent life. But it's also, it's also a huge opportunity. And that's why the call for action is so relevant. He said, do not look the other way. Do not hesitate. Recognize that this world is hungry for action, not words. So yes, this is going to be a declaration of words, but hopefully one which inspires action. And it's time to act with courage and wisdom. And that really, I believe, I'm getting old. You can see from my hair. But for all of you, this is your destiny. This is the destiny for us. Uh, because President Mandela reminded us that sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. And you can be that great generation and that greatness should blossom. He said these words in 2005 at a big event in London, Trafalgar Square. Of, uh, you may recall, those who are old like me may recall, there was a campaign, a global effort to make poverty history. Now, 17, 18 years later, poverty is certainly not history. It's even on the on the increase. So we are not pretending that Cape Town is going to radically change the world, the World Science Forum, but we are convinced that with your contributions and all of us, we can make one step because it always starts with one step and one contribution to progress towards this road of, of social justice. So thank you very much for, for your attention. That was what I wanted to do was just to share with you our thinking, why we believe this course is so important, give you a first insight into what will be in this declaration, because what we would want you to do is to very much not join the conversation, but own the declaration. It's not going to be my declaration. It's not going to be a DSI declaration. This should be a declaration of the collective. So you have our website there. You have our Twitter handle and the different hashtags. So we, if not today, as this process unfolds, look forward to your active participation in this debate. So thank you very much for, for your attention. Um, we, I'm going to invite two speakers, uh, one privileged with us in the room here and then colleague online to very briefly just share with us their perspectives, their views, and then we, we will invite uh, open um, to the floor. So I'm going to start with Minister Councillor Shen Long. Do we have the microphone? Yeah. Um, who is the Minister Councillor responsible for science, technology and innovation at the Embassy of China in Pretoria. Said South Africa and China enjoys a deep, strong partnership in science collaboration, including because we share a vision. We share that vision of science making a difference in the lives of people and science fighting poverty. So we're just going to ask the Minister Councillor to briefly just share with us uh, his views on the course of science for social justice. Thank you, Minister Councillor. Okay. Uh, as we know, uh, science and technology in the region plays uh, more important roles in uh, develop, uh, economic and also in uh, social development. Uh, I just can give you some uh, cases in China. You see, uh, recent, recent years, China 
develop a better navigation system. And uh, just uh, less than, I think, 20, 20 years, we have already uh, finished to uh, build up a better navigation system. And then now, it serves our uh, Chinese uh, society. Uh, not only uh, promote the economic development, but also for the uh, uh, social development. And uh, as I know, uh, it will create the values every year, at least more than 50 billion US dollars for each year. So almost around one trillion Wrong a year, so it helps China a lot. Just one technology system and one platform that can part can help China a lot. And another case I can uh, share with you, like the five G technology. You see, uh, Huawei company develop uh, uh, advanced, most advanced five G te technology in the world. And then now, China government and uh, has already uh, built the 5G infrastructure in the whole China. And the, the latest uh, date is there are more than 2.2 million 5G stations in China and occupied 60% of the world total 5G stations. So in 5G infrastructure, China will lead the world. So, and also, China would like to share the 5G technology with other countries like South Africa. So Huawei is in South Africa and also want to help uh, South Africa to develop 5G infrastructures. And it will help uh, South Africa a lot to develop a digital economy. So, uh, so you see, uh, STI. And really play a very important role in developing economic and also social uh, development. And, uh, and also, just like Didi Dan has already mentioned, right now, uh, the human beings face uh, many uh, big challenges uh, in the, for global level, like climate change and uh, uh, public health and also the uh, food safety. And also, uh, if you want to uh, solve these big challenges, money is very important. But also, science and technology is also very important. If you just have money, maybe you can't solve the problem. It's here, you have to rely on science, technology, and innovation. And so, and also, STI not just plays uh, laws in one country. It uh, plays laws in all over the world, so we cooperate in each other. Uh, if you want to solve this global big challenge, we have to cooperate each other. And uh, you see, for climate change, you know, the COP27 will be here, will be here a few days, just maybe open the uh, Sunday or Saturday in Egypt. So we, all over the, uh, every country is going to come together to discuss how to solve the climate change. And uh, so, and also, the World Science Forum is a very important platform for the scientists from all over the world to come together to discuss and to communicate each other and how can we complete each other and in future to solve this world big challenge. So, and also, China has a very good relationship with South Africa to complete each other in uh, STI area. Uh, every year, both governments support many uh, joint research projects. And also, there are nine joint research centers between China and uh, South Africa. So in future, we also want to promote set up more joint research centers between China and uh, South Africa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Councillor, for those insightful remarks. And we certainly look forward to China's contribution to the World Science Forum. I'm now going to invite Dr. Uh, Lukovi Seke, who's from the African Union 
Products uh, Development Agency, Odan Nepat, to share with us a Pan-African perspective. He's joining us online. Uh, Lukovi, can you hear us? Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. We look forward to your views. Thank you. And the, the greeting from uh, Nairobi, where we are going through the review of STISA 2024 and to prepare the next uh, uh, STISA. So uh, on our side, what we are planning to do, especially uh, as part of the side event on the fifth, we need to share with uh, the continent and the world uh, the experience we have on the continent in, 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 in connection with uh, measurement of uh, science, technology and innovation mainly R&D and, and, and innovation, because uh, it's very difficult to manage science and innovation if we cannot measure it. So uh, the, the, the complexity we have today is that we are finding more people and more officials who are uh, indeed uh, uh, busy managing uh, STI, but uh, they don't uh, have the component on measurement. And uh, because of that, uh, we are also working very close with uh, the African Union Commission and also uh, involving some uh, uh, key countries. Uh, among them, we have South Africa to see how we can materialize also and support the, the African network of uh, 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 science advisor to ministers. So uh, that is something very important. And uh, uh, in addition to that, we also have another uh, a forum on, uh, on STI measurement that is going to take place from the 28th to the 30th in Cape Town, where we as Africa, we are uh, making sure that each year we track the level of investment we put in the research to fit in the current knowledge-based and innovation-led economy. And those indicators that countries are producing uh, are also helping them to come up with a, 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 an evidence-based policy uh, review and development and also tracking of uh, some target in uh, some of the uh, uh, strategy. So uh, those are the uh, three information that uh, we are willing to, uh, to, to provide and uh, also to invite uh, any uh, stakeholder and other uh, uh, constituencies supporting the STI agenda to really join us. And as you know, uh, uh, based on the AU system, we are not only focusing on the continental frameworks on science, technology, and innovation. And uh, as you know, we, 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 we are now implementing uh, uh, STI um, in conjunction with education because we have a single platform of ministers that are, are assessing uh, the implementation of science and innovation as well as education. And we have 10 head of state and the government who are championing education and the science and technology innovation on the continent. So we are making sure that we align uh, some of the goal under the 2030 agenda. And uh, as I'm concluding, uh, what we are focusing on now is under Goal number nine, where we have industrialization, infrastructure, and innovation, we believe that under 9.5, we are advised uh, globally to e increase our investment in R&D, and we have uh, a, a, a very holistic uh, indicator we call gross domestic uh, indicator, gross domestic product on uh, R&D, which, uh, which appear very simple, but is very complex because it has uh, two segments, and those two segments have subsector. Uh, or, or various cluster of indicators. So those are the few uh, information I could share with you. And we have to submit our final uh, 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 list because we already secure all the speakers. It's very uh, uh, intense and uh, very crowded, our, our program, but we are obliged to limit it to the, a, a specific number of speakers, uh, panelists, uh, to five, but we have been having more than uh, 10 uh, speakers. And among the speakers, we also have the, the UK government uh, supporting one of the processes on the continent. We are piloting the, uh, the integration of various data in, in measuring, in, in, measure, in terms of measurement. So uh, those are the few information I was uh, uh, really willing to share with you. I, I thank uh, uh, the South African government for allowing us to be part of this process and all the stakeholders attending this meeting. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Deputy Director General. Thank you very much, Dr. Seke, for that input. And we look forward to active contributions from the African Union family, Oda Nepat and others in Cape Town, and that we, we will have the honor and the privilege to receive Commissioner Bellusin. Now, colleagues, we have a few minutes, only a few minutes, because some, many of us have to go to another session. But let me, I would not, it would be 
uh, miss for us to not have this opportunity. Any interventions, any comments from the floor, any initial reactions? Our good friend Jackie from the Swiss Embassy. Uh, Jackie, uh, the microphone, please. Any any views on science for social justice? No, um, yeah, if I can pick up. Yeah, no, Don, I just want to congratulate you. I think um, on on the uh, outlook for for um, setting a framework for social justice, I think is incredibly important. Sorry, my name is Jackie. I'm uh, the Science and Technology Council at the Embassy of Switzerland. So I also want to comment that we have now working worked with the South African government and these entities for about three years, looking to establish a sustainable development goals villages. And we're making quite progress. It's hard, but in the end, we're getting somewhere. So it's very much high on the em Embassy of Switzerland's agenda, the whole issue of social justice. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And I, I know there are one or two Swiss speakers on the program, and I think the Swiss Embassy will be in the exhibition. So uh, we do encourage you, if you're in Cape Town, to, to visit our Swiss partners, also very important partners for us. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. I am Advocate Khotso I chair the Innovation Hub Management Company, um, whose role has previously been elucidated by our colleague, Lina. So at a personal level, I just want to share one perspective on social justice particularly. And that is to say that it would be prudent for multinational cooperations when they set up plants uh, in the host countries, especially in the southern tip, to not only invest in sales and service centers mm. that do not support local capacity, transfer of skills to host countries, and ensuring that those countries develop exactly. their own yeah. capabilities and in investment in the research and development capacity of those countries. Because then what you have is this partnership that continues to create more and more consumers in the South and not producers mm -hmm. who will gainfully benefit from all the innovation that is happening across the world. And this is something that the states themselves and the different organizations should support so that there's accountability and some level of commitment yeah. on the part of the OEMs yeah. to support. For instance, here in Gauteng in South Africa, there's a creation of what we call uh, smart cities. For yes. instance, the Lanceria Smart City. If at the point that the Lanceria Smart City and others are being created, there was sufficient local capacity. Can you imagine the amount of dividends and benefit for the local population with those types of developments? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that's an excellent intervention. It's very concrete. I mean, it speaks to the nature of international cooperation of foreign investment and how do we make sure there's, there's real capacity building and, and real ownership. And, and, and those are exactly the issues which should be included in the declaration. So thank you very much, sir, and we look forward to see you in Cape Town. Colleagues, before we conclude, any last comments, views? If not, thank you very much for, for your attention here. Uh, this is just the start of a process. It's going to be a vibrant online communication process in the coming weeks. And then hopefully on Tuesday, the 6th of December, we will see you all at the World Science Forum in Cape Town. Thank you very much. And if you want to continue a similar discussion, I believe there's a session in the Crystal Room upstairs on science diplomacy, where, where some of us will be going now. Thank you very much. <laughs>